So I'm going to go ahead and jump into, I want to segue in because that was a topic that's really good for this next one. Uh, how can people from different Christian denominations get better at coming together for the purpose of the gospel? And are theological differences the barrier that is the problem, or is it their own pride that is the problem? I, I think the pride can be a problem, but I, I think I love I love uh, I love being Protestant, just so we're clear. But one of the things about being Protestants is that we've continued to protest in the Protestant tradition. So there's this thing embedded in Protestants to kind of rebel, rebuild, get angry divide, split churches, split denominations, all the time. So I think it's, it's it's honestly one of the cons of our faith is that because we don't have as much of a connection to church history, layman Protestants, obviously scholars and study people are going to know their church history. We don't have the same connection. We don't know who Augustine is. We don't know who um, Ignatius is. We don't know who these guys are. So we don't have the same connection to church history. We don't adhere to any type of apostolic succession, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And so what happens is we just keep protesting and keep protesting and keep protesting, thinking that our specific sect is the perfect one and the ideal one. And I think that is part of our DNA, unfortunately. It is what it is. So I think how do we deal with that? We combat with that with the gospel, that like you without Jesus is, you're not a good person, bud. Like you're, you, you need a savior. And it's not about how much you know, and it's not about how flashy you can communicate and say buzzwords that are sounding theological, that it's actually about you following Jesus. And when we look at the cross, it should level the playing field. And when it levels the playing field, then we can say, okay, let me not think that my camp has all the answers and that everyone else is a junior varsity Christian or not a Christian at all. So that's how I would look at it. I would just say that that'd be super lonely if I only hung out with Christians that I fully agreed with. I would be by myself all the time. So I think that um, being able to unify, even though you have differences, is a Christian quality that um, I think the, the world steals from and we now run from because we're, we are we are so full of pride. I think there is a, a bit of pride in it where, you know, superior theology, I, I know all of this, but really we, as the, the most theologically sound person in the world knows absolutely nothing in comparison to God himself. And I think that we all need to come from that position. Um, I have a, a little group of creators, some of them are here, called the Why Jesus Network. We disagree on so much stuff, so much stuff, but we still work together and collaborate. I'm sure all of us right here disagree on so much stuff, but we're still on the same panel. And I think that if if we do more stuff like this, and you guys that are in the audience, if you if you make it a point to unify on the essentials and just have discussions about the secondary issues, um, with you know, the, there's nuance in that conversation as well. You guys can be examples to everybody else, and uh, don't make. Don't allow other people to think that you're wrong for not wanting to separate because of these things. And, and we need to create a culture of where people who are trying to separate because of these things are starting to feel like they're wrong. So. Anything else for that? I, I I, yeah, you go first. Yeah, and you know, there's a passage in scripture, who would have thought, that deals with this, right? <laughs> and, this passage of scripture is oftentimes referred to as like the love chapter, right? And people read it at weddings and people read it to, you know, think about their spouses. It's actually written to the church about these issues, right? And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is about church order. This isn't about you and your spouse, right? And so what it says is, if I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Hello, Mr. Charismatic Prophetic Guy, right? If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and knowledge and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Hello, Mr. Word of Faith, Mr. Charismatic Guy, right? And if I give away all my possessions to charity and if I surrender my body so that I may, uh, so I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, love is not brag, it is not arrogant, it does not act disgracefully, it does not seek its own benefit, it is not provoked does not keep an account of a wrong suffering. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It keeps 
every confidence. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And then he goes on to say, where these spiritual gifts, these things go. And so I think when I read this, I go, if we're actually loving our fellow Christian brother, which Jesus said, the world will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. That means that if I have a disagreement with John, I have a disagreement with John <laughs> and John, I believe the best about them. Even if I disagree with their conclusion, I don't think, oh, well, he's just lazy theologically and that's why he believes this or he just doesn't have the faith. No, no, no. I start with the presupposition that I actually believe the best about him and that even though we have disagreements on conclusions, he means well and we just have a different paradigm on things. I think it would help us a ton within the capital C church to extend that same dignity and that same love that the scriptures talk about with how we engage with people from different camps who see things differently. And then we all disagree on stuff too. Like there's, I think there's been some big things that we disagreed on. Like, and it's fun because I know like, if you don't want me saying like, John and I, like we didn't know each other before this. I knew of you and I've always like respected your work, but man, like sometimes when there's some like cultural issues with Christianity, like there's times we're gonna disagree. I don't think like, I disagreed with both these guys like recently, but I don't think any less of them. And I think, what we see now with uh, denominations, like why do we have different denominations? I, you guys can disagree with this, but I think it's sin. And I think it's rooted in pride because you now have people that just start elevating like, well, I think infant baptism needs to be this high up here. And if you don't believe it, go start your own. And what's happened now is, yeah, like these guys have said, we've lost the essentials. And yes, there's things that, uh, even talking about continuationalism and cessationism, we disagree on that kind of stuff. But we can still bond together and unify as brothers in Christ to still be fighting to spread the good news, aka the gospel, uh, without feeling like, oh man, I don't know if I want to come on your podcast or promote your stuff because we just don't agree on it. You good? Okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, and I love that you brought up First Corinthians, written by Paul, but it's also echoed in multiple places. The first one that comes to mind since we're in a convention having this kind of talk is First Peter. Everything has an answer, but you give it love so yes awesome okay guys so since we're talking about some of the disagreements let's go ahead and jump into another one thanks so much for watching that clip if you want to see the full episode click right here god bless